So everything so far in 3.2 that we had been discussing was about short run production. Let's talk a little bit about this long run production. Whenever we see that our labor and our capital are both variable, what does that look like? And where's the best point to produce at that point? Well, in order to do that, we need to look at something known as our long run average cost curve. Now, if you notice this graph is a little bit different, along our x axis down there, we have quantity. Along our y axis, we have something called average cost. And this is just like, okay, on average, how much did each product cost us to make? And so, what we see is that our long run average cost curve looks a little bit something like a bowl or a letter U, right? So, if you notice, the blue line goes down, 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 and then we hit kind of like a bottoming out point, and then we come back up. Why exactly is that and what exactly does that mean? Why is our average cost per product we make go down and then why does it go back up? Well, first I want us to kind of split this up into two parts and we're going to split it right there from where we have the decreasing part on the left and the increasing part on the right. This decreasing part on the left is something we call economies of scale. Economies of scale is just whenever we see that a firm's technology and their production methods make it, make it such that the average cost goes down as input increases. Think about big stores like Walmart. They produce so much of their products that they can sell them at such a cheap price because what they've done is they've gotten to the point where their production methods have allowed them to spread their costs out across so many different products that they can bring their costs down really, really low. And that's why like your average mom and pop store, that's why their prices are a little bit higher because they haven't achieved these economies of scale because what we see is that they're producing fewer items and so they're spreading costs out over fewer number of items. But the more you make, the lower your average cost per product goes. So that's for a couple reasons. We talked about, you know, sort of like the idea of labor specialization. Uh, the bigger you grow, you're able to specialize with your labor more and be more efficient with it. Same thing doing that managerially, right? But also that you are able to purchase more efficient capital goods, machinery that's more efficient and it's, it's more effective. And so you're able to bring that average cost down. But what happens whenever we start to see the average cost per product start to go back up? This is known as diseconomies of scale. And you're like, well, why would a company want to do that? Well, that's the thing they don't, right? Diseconomies of scale is where we see a firm's technology and their production methods make it that their average costs increase as output increases. And this is sort of what happens when companies grow too big, right? We see that they get to a point as they grow too big that there becomes maybe a lack of productivity. Maybe lazy workers can slip through the cracks uh, and it causes some issues. There becomes breakdown within lines of communication and management as well when you grow too big. Uh, kind of again thinking that too many cooks in the kitchen kind of idea. And so we look at this with the long run to try to understand, okay, businesses want to bring their average costs way down. Um, and we see that they're able to bring it further down as they achieve economies of scale. But they do hit a point where they start to hit something called diseconomies of scale in which their average cost goes back up.